Okay, so now we're just going to look at how to create pretty maps to put in your report that you already have your profile in. So you can see here on the left under Project Explorer under Grids, we've got our Gravity and our TMI grid. So double click on Gravity to open it up here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go Map Tools, New Map, New Map from XYZ. And this window comes up and you've got to put in the minimum and maximum X and Y. But we're going to do it the easy way and just click here on Interactive. You can see it's already registered what the coordinate system is. So click on Interactive. And now we're going to click and drag a box around our region. And it's now changed the coordinates needed for minimum and max. We're going to click Next, Map Name. Again, I always click on the three dots to just check it's going in the right place. Um, I'm going to click here Map. Gravity, I've actually already got one um, existing, but I'm going to take out this GRD. So I should say map underscore gravity with the extension dot map. Click open. Um, sorry, I'm actually going to add here TMI because it's actually so much easier if you just put it all into one map. So map underscore gravity underscore TMI dot map. You can change if you landscape or portrait different sizes. I'm just going to keep it on this. Distance in meters. I'm not going to put in a map scale. I'm going to click finish. Okay, and a blank screen opens up, blank window. Now we're going to go map tools, base map, draw base map. So we're actually going to put the coordinates on now. Um, only thing to really change here is this one. Um, one means that there's a bit of a gap between the actual colored area and the outside of your coordinate system. Zero means it would take it away um, and the map would reach right to the edge where your coordinate numbers are listed. Um, I'm going to leave it at one for now. The only thing you need to change here, reference grid. Um, I'm going to click no. So I'm not going to use UTM as my outside coordinates. I'm actually going to use lat long. So I don't want, I put no here because I don't want UTM, but I go down here to add lat long annotation and I click either do you want crosses on the map where lat long intersect, do you want dotted lines, solid lines, or edge ticks only is what I prefer. And then what are your increments? I'm not actually sure. I'm just going to put 0 0.1, 0 0.1 for now. Um, and let's click next. Do you want to add a title? You can. I seldom do, but let's start. Fair to Dome. You could put your name there if you wanted. Often for company reports, you would do this so you know who's done what. Click Finish. Okay, and you can see it's probably too small, the increments that I've done. So I'm going to go here, Map Tools, Base Map, Draw Base Map. So I'm just going to say follow the same process, but I'm going to go here. Let's try 0 0.5. Maybe it will be too big. And go next, go finish. Okay, that's great. The main thing that you want is you want at least two points because um, having been someone who's taken other people's maps from papers and tried to digitize where profiles were collected, um, it's very difficult to digitize if you only have one X or one Y value. So if you're okay about other people using work, make sure that at least there's two ticks on the side. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to drag the gravity into here. So we click on this grid on the left-hand side. So I click on it and drag it on top. Doesn't work. There we are. And do it with the TMI as well. Okay. Let's click this Earth button so we get a better perspective. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And again, you can drag down here if you, if it's too far out the way to look at the group manager tool. So it's telling you in the data section you've got TMI and gravity and then the coordinates and your base you've got a title when you click on it it outlines it north arrow scale bar surroundings is just the surrounding black line. Okay I'm going to click on coordinates and again it's too small I'm going to make it bigger I'm going to right click I'm going to go edit this group right click select all right click text attributes I'm going to change it again to 3. Your choice if you want to leave it as italic. Click OK. You can see it's a lot easier to see now. And you actually need to do the same with your scale bar. Click on it in the left um, group manager tool here. Put your mouse on top. Right click. 
edit this group right click select all right click text attributes I'm going to also change it to three and click OK very important here is you can move this if you want maybe move it up a bit here but never ever expand it to the right or the left because then it obviously changes what your scale is um, and it doesn't adjust automatically so it's a bit on top of each other here so you can drag it down because that's not changing your actual scale itself but never drag it right or left to expand it you can even click on the title here if you want and by expanding it it actually makes the text size bigger instead of having to go right click um, edit this group and I can actually drag in my north arrow um, I'm actually going to drag my title on top here and I'm going to get rid of my surroundings here okay so you can see um, if you take off the TMI you've got gravity here um, and you can toggle back and forth um, what we're seeing here is the edge of the craton and so what I'm going to plot now is I'm going to plot my um, color legend bar. So what did I do? I went to map tools. I go down here to symbols and I go color legend bar and I click on it. So you can't just put in a magnetic or gravity map. You've actually got to tell them people what the value, what the colors represent value wise. So this first thing here, data layer, let's choose gravity first title it's going to be milligal because those are my units and it's your choice if you want a vertical or horizontal and I prefer horizontal um, you can click here on more and it's going to tell you here the text size and the length and um, height and width of your bar let's just try it first because it's much easier to come back and adjust it click on locate and then you can actually click on the map where you want your thing your um, color bar to be so nothing happened, it just took you back here, but now it's remembered here where it should locate the color bar. I click OK, and you can see it's far too wide. So either you can go here in your Group Manager tool and click on color bar so that it's selected. Go back here, right click, click on color bar at the bottom, and it actually takes you right back here. And let's click on More, and we're going to adjust the the width we're going to make from 4 to 2 we might have to come back my text size needs to be bigger um, let's click on OK OK that's bigger there text size is still a problem let's go right click color bar maybe I was selecting the wrong thing more OK that's probably what it is so I'm guessing uh, sorry I changed the title text size subtitle text size is actually I actually want here label text size um, I'm not sure if they've got all these options on the older version um, but you can try so I'm just going to change it there click OK and that's a little bit better okay so that was for gravity I'm going to go back here and do exactly the same for magnetics okay so if I go up to the top here go map tools symbols um, color legend bar it's going to kind of start me from scratch I'm going to have to adjust the location I'm going to have to adjust the size so I think for now the easiest thing to do is click here on gravity again so it's selected right click color bar and what we're going to so now it's saved everything that we previously said so it's saved the width and we've got our two it saved the text size but now I'm going to change this to magnetics and I'm going to put in a title nano tesla and I'm going to click OK okay and you can see it hasn't overwritten our gravity it's just added a new one so you can see there's gravity and there's magnetics so you've just got to remember to toggle them on and off according to which one is on your screen although okay we should have probably done this afterwards but so now in geosoft it always applies a non-linear color scale now let me tell you what that means if you take your mouse go up here to where it says agg tmi so that's your tmi grid double click on it this is the color tool so this is the color bar that it's got and this is how it's mapping it to the data so you can see it's not a straight line it's um, exponential and so down here these values are the blue values in the middle here the majority of the values um, are green and then as we move up on the end here this is the pink 
Now you can see there's not so many values on the end here, and so we're giving them um, pink, but it might be worthwhile to change the scale so that we really, in the middle here, what it is saying, sorry, is that if you look at the bottom, it says minus 89, that is nano Tesla. If we scroll up, it's about minus 10, minus 13, close to zero there. It goes up to 230. So it's telling you that in the middle here, we said about minus 10, 10, 0. That is where most of the data is. So there's only a little bit of the data here in the minus, and there's only a little bit of the data here about 200. So we want to apply our colors in the region where the most data is. So what I'm going to do is about over here where it starts to rise up your histogram, it's at about minus 50, and over here it's at about 130. So I'm going to ignore the few data at the bottom at the, and at the top, and I'm going to focus in this middle region where most of the data is. So I'm going to click on this straight line, so it says use a linear distribution. And so currently these are the maximum and minimum values of our color bar. I'm going to change this. Oh, now I can't even remember, I think. We'll do minus 100 for now, and it was up to 134. And you should try to do a contour interval because it just gives you regular values. I'm going to use 5. It's moaning at me that I've chosen bad values, but that's fine. It adjusts it automatically for you, and I click OK. And now you can see your color will have changed in the back, and now I've got a straight line from here to here in the region where there is the most data. So that just gives us a li linear color scale that makes a bit more sense. Let's click OK. OK, and even our color scale here has changed. Um, and so on the screen here, it has blown up these regions that are most positives and uh, negatives, but we're seeing a lot more of the detail in between. So if, for example, in this region I was looking for sills or dikes, um, that have a much lower amplitude than this large anomaly here representing Fredefort or this large anomaly representing the edge of the craton. This would help me because I'd be focusing on, on the smaller features. Although in this case we actually do want to focus in on the bigger features. So it's your choice if you want to leave it as this. Otherwise you might actually, even though I told you not to, you might want to focus in on this larger region here because that's actually where a lot of the amplitudes from your anomaly are coming from. So this is from values of like 80, and we said it was up to 200 or 260. So let's just see what it would look like. Let's go 80, 260, and go here. So everything else is going to be blues and maybe greens, and now it's going to look, focus in on the high amplitude area and give us more variation in that area. Okay. So, I mean, the only reason why we're doing this is because this is our focus area, is this high amplitude um, region. It does look a bit unusual. Maybe let's go back here and change it from minus 100 to 255. Let's go, okay, it's moaning at us again, that's fine. Um, and maybe that's a bit more reasonable. So your choice, how you want to do it. I mean, you really just want to focus in on your feature of importance. Um, but we are starting to see the two rims of the crater here. So you can play around with your color bar and just see what is best. So that was um, magnetics. Let's just take off magnetics and put on our gravity and take off the color, scale, color bar and put in gravity. Again, double click on the gravity in the top left hand corner here under group manager. Again, most of our data is down here, yet over in this top region here, some of the pinks are being mapped to data that's probably not a lot of, of data points. So I want to focus in between this region of minus 160, and if I drag up along the colors, it's probably 2, minus 108. So let's do that before I forget it, minus 160, minus 108, color interval of 5, Click OK. You can see we've lost a lot of colors here because it's actually not mapping that much. Um, so if you don't, if you're unhappy with this, you can click on this back arrow that says Reset, or you could even open up here and choose a different um, color scale altogether. Um, again, because we want to be focusing in on this higher area, maybe we should just keep the values up there. So let's click on Linear. Um, I'm actually just going to make this a whole number. 
So 170 and this I'm going to make minus 40. So I'm not actually cutting out anything now. Um, let's just see what it looks like and click OK. OK, so we're starting to lose a lot of background feature and we're really focusing in on this Fred of dough. So you can see where I'm going to reset again. Before we thought, oh, it's kind of high everywhere. Whereas this, as you start to adjust your color scale, um, you start to get a lot more detail um, in the feature itself. So you can see that actually, well, the high is a lot more in the middle here. So you can play around with the color scale. Um, it's a tough one because you've got such large variations. You can see that your color scale here has become a lot smaller um, just because we've limited uh, our range. And that's fine. I'm going to right click. Uh, you can see I moved it around here to get it back in the middle. Now that it's selected, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go color bar. And I'm actually going to just go down to more. And I'm actually going to take out decimal places. It says label decimal. It's got one decimal place. It's really not necessary in this case. I'm going to change that to zero. And again, I'm actually going to change these text size to four for the labels. And let's click OK. OK, it's a lot easier to see now. So when you put this in a report, you really want people to see your values. Um, let's do the same for the magnetic one over here. I've clicked on it. I'm going to click here, color bar. It's going to come up under more. I'm going to take away the number of decimal places, and I'm going to make the text labels bigger so I can see them. Click OK. Much easier now that we don't have the decimal places. So you can just play around with this and see what color bar best um, brings out the features on your map. And so once you've done that, I would say let's zoom into the full extent. So let's go up here to the zoom in box and magnifying glass. Draw it around the outside. Click one more time. Okay, so now I'm just trying to fill the full map extent. Um, this is my lazy way of doing it. So I've really just showing the outs the whole map on my map area uh, sorry in my map here and the reason why i'm doing this is because when i go map export and I export as a jpeg now that i've said viewed region to export it really i'm going to have minimal work having to crop this image because it's really just going to show me this region of the map it's just going to export this region of the map resolution of 150 is fine and um, you might have to increase this to 300 if you're doing it for publication just see sorry click OK and um, again let's do free I'm going to call it Freda Fort and I'm going to call it map 